Ever dreamt of painting your favorite anime characters with such a detail and vibrancy that they seem to leap right off the canvas? Achieving that effect is well within reach, as the gap between a mediocre piece and one that blows people away lies in just a few key techniques. Now, if you've been following along on our channel, you already know how to get the character stencil or image onto your shoes. Yet, that's only half the battle. So in this tutorial, I'll unveil a technique that completely transformed my approach to painting characters. Additionally, I'll provide the exact color palette needed for most anime characters and reveal an often overlooked tip that will instantly elevate your character work. All right, let's kick things off by using these Fusion Red Jordan 1s as our base shoe. They'll serve as the perfect canvas for bringing this Dragon Ball theme to life. After prepping them with some light sanding and acetone, we'll start by laying separate gradients on both shoes for their respective backgrounds. On the right shoe, my goal is to capture the scenery from the location where Janimba and Gogeta battled while also adding my own twist to it. It's crucial for me to create a sense of movement, texture, and overall chaos to fully integrate the characters into this scene. As for the other shoe, I'll opt for a slightly simpler background, recreating this sky scene. All right, wrapping up these backgrounds took way longer than expected, but putting in that extra effort to ensure the perfect backdrop for our characters will undoubtedly pay off down the line. Next, we move on to creating our character stencils. Our video detailing this specific method took the spotlight as our most watched tutorial last year, and witnessing what you all have been able to create with it has been incredibly inspiring. My favorite part of the process is weeding out all of the individual stencil pieces as it allows you to truly visualize how your character will appear on the shoe. Following that, I'll make sure to mask off the surrounding area before applying some primer coats. All right, I've got the base layer laid down on our stencil and I wanted to show what that looks like right before we're ready for the color stage. Now, a question that I've been asked a million times is what's the magical color palette needed to paint skin tones? As much as I would love, love for there to be a simple answer that I could offer, the reality is far more nuanced. It greatly depends on the source image that you're working from. For example, this image here, despite featuring the same character, we can see a range of completely different shades, each requiring its own set of paints to achieve. However, I'm more than happy to share my top 10 most commonly used paints for achieving skin tones. If you ever find yourself stuck on where to even begin, here are two of my favorite tricks for finding the right color. First, head over to goldenpaints.com slash mixer, load up your image, select the color with the eyedropper tool, and these color mixing recipes can get you trending in the right direction. Additionally, you can utilize software like Photoshop or Procreate. By using the color picker tool over one of the midtones, you can determine whether the color trends towards orange or pink along with its general value. The truth is, having a wide range of colors at your disposal makes your job much easier. Unlike other traditional methods like oil painting, where you might intentionally limit yourself to a simpler palette for an entire project, having more colors here allows for fine tuning to a greater degree. The first image I'll be color matching is this one of Vegito. If we examine his main skin color, we can see he has a sun-kissed peach hue. To replicate this, we'll start with primarily white inside our mixing cup and then add a bit of Georgia peach. This initial mix is probably close to 85-15. Remember to add the color slowly to avoid accidentally overpowering the mixture as it's much easier to add than subtract paint. Always make plenty as we'll need more down the road too. For a lot of these fair skin characters, I found Georgia peach, salmon, and shell pink to be particularly helpful. With this color mix ready, I can start painting within the designated region of my line work stencil. We're not aiming for perfection here, the goal is to just lay down the basic color blocking. I'll repeat these steps for each of the main components of the image, such as his hair and outfit. Expect this process to take around three to four coats for each color after applying a light base coat. Typically, I found it most effective to begin with the mid-tones as they usually compromise the bulk of the image. From there, you'd create lighter and darker variations for your highlights and shadows, which we'll be covering how to make very soon. 
However, there are always exceptions to the rule. Take, for example, this image of Gogeta, where due to the dramatic lighting, much of his figure is cast in shadow. In such cases, I found that I prefer to work from light to dark. Then we've still got plenty more to do on these, so we'll go piece by piece and start fleshing out the rest of these characters. Now, here's a look at each of them before we get ready to pull back that line work stencil. Have you ever wondered how your favorite comics or mangas are brought to life? It's quite the intricate process, typically involving a team of skilled individuals. But on this project, we're wearing all of the hats. You might notice that we've switched things up a bit, starting with the flatter's task first and saving the role of illustrator, particularly the black line work, for last. This step is perhaps the most crucial to get right, but before we dive into that, let's put on our colorist hat next. To create darker shades and add depth to our image, we'll begin by examining it to determine if the shadows lean towards pink, orange, or brown tones. If you're uncertain, you can use some of those same methods as before. Load the image into the online color mixer or bring it into Photoshop or Procreate and check it with the color picker. This will help us identify the selected color and understand which direction to take for our darker shades. Now, if you've never done this before, you might instinctively think to simply mix black into your midtones in order to darken them. However, this approach is not as straightforward as it seems. Adding black or other dark colors too quickly can overpower the mixture and muddy the tones. Instead, we'll focus on gradually incorporating darker hues into the initial base color. For instance, if we're aiming for a deeper, richer skin tone, we might start with a peach base and slowly introduce darker shades of beige or brown to achieve the desired depth. Keep in mind that expecting to nail the perfect mix on your first try is quite a long shot. It's normal to require some refinements along the way. So as you can see, it's not really an overly complex color palette that you need in order to create a lot of these different skin tones. It's really about having a select few colors that you're gonna be using over and over in very different ratios, depending on the image you're trying to recreate. By following these steps and being patient with the process, you'll be able to create those killer skin tones that greatly enhance the overall quality of your artwork. And remember to have the image displayed on a nearby screen so you can check your progress and make informed decisions as you move along. Another thing to keep in mind is that sometimes the way a color looks inside the cup versus once you start laying it on the shoe can be a little bit different depending on the materials and depending on the colors that you're working with. So you do want to remain flexible and that sometimes once I start to lay it on the shoe, I might say it's still a little bit too dark, so I need to lighten it another 5% or so. Sometimes it's a very minor tweak, but you'll be much happier with the results in the long run. Thankfully, creating highlight colors is usually much easier. Generally speaking, you'll be able to just add white into your midtone, which you can see a bit of as I work on Vegito's hair here. Now folks, if you haven't tried it before, there's no better time than now to give the old fashioned toothpick method a try. If you'd like to see just what this process really looks like, we recently did a seven and a half hour live stream painting the Janimba character. All jokes aside, whatever tool makes you feel the most comfortable and in control is the one to use. Whether that's a detail brush, toothpick, shish kebab stick, or even an airbrush needle like you'll see me using here in some tricky areas. Make sure to take those darker shades all the way up to the edges and future you will thank you when it comes time to lay down the black line work. So something that I've done with the character work, now that all of the cell shading is done right before we move into the black line work, is I decided to add just a little bit of a highlight or a little bit of white 
peeking behind Vegito's shoulder. This technique effectively integrates my character directly into the background and setting. It eliminates that sticker-like appearance that can often occur and is something that I struggled with early on. Additionally, adding the highlight ensures that your character really pops. Now, without further ado, let's get down to business and tackle the most vital task of all, locking in these colors and artwork with some black lines. When it comes to pulling those straight, thin lines, controlling your breath is crucial. I found that briefly holding my breath while executing the line helps minimize any involuntary movements. Once you've laid down all of your line work, it's time to pull out any of the necessary paints from earlier and spend some time doing any touch-ups. One of the best parts about paint in general is that it can be easy to touch up and fix your mistakes. Once we peel that tape back, you can apply your favorite finisher to the project. 99% of the time, I'll opt for a matte finish, and that's what you can be oh so satisfied with seeing here. Now, the thing is, everything that I've just taught you is completely useless unless you know exactly how to get an image placed onto your shoes. This is the foundation for which everything is built upon. But the good news is, you don't even need to be a good drawer to do it right. And I'm gonna teach you all about it in this video next. All right guys, everybody get out there and just create.